Good morning. It is quite chilly and as you can hear the generator is running. But only for a little while to help out until the sun has risen enough to produce energy. And as you can see, we have a lot of frost. And let me check the temperature right now. So that is what we have. And as you can see, it is below zero. Just too below, but it's below. Let's have a look at this. And as you can see, there is also frost. So, winter has come. And we are at the end of November. It's a bit crazy. So now it's time to go and get the bovine family. To put them through our makeshift sorting facility that will grow and become better over time when we can afford to do it. And the purpose of this is to check them out ourselves before the inspection. The inspection is the tuberculosis check that is mandatory. And of course we need to make sure that everybody has the right earmark and uh, the list that the authority has matches with the reality, this kind of thing. So we do this ourselves to make sure that everything is in order and then the veterinarian in the role of inspector can come and uh, do his job. It's the very same person, so he is our veterinarian, but it, in this moment when it's about, they call it in Spanish, saneamiento, um, when he has to do the tuberculosis check, then he is the inspector and works for the authority. That is the way how this works here. Here they come. By the way, we have another new calf that was born yesterday. I hope I can show you that one. That feedback that Juan will grab in a second is there to make them more interested in the back instead of the grass and so that they go into the door. Let's see how that goes. So first one goes in, second one, and that means that everybody else will follow. Usually it goes that way. So the little one there is not the one I was mentioning. That one comes later, I would think. There is no earmark on it yet. I haven't seen the one yet. I need to ask. Might be that the mother stayed behind. Good portion of all these have now been processed, so to say. And those are the ones that are left. They're not done yet. So the one with the new calf is still somewhere over there. Let's see that I can zoom in. I think I spotted them. Right there. So there they are, they are separated from the herd because the little one did not want to follow yesterday. So the guys decided to leave them there. And it's a good idea because all this movement here 
and the big ones pushing the smaller ones aside is not really the place for a calf that is just two days old. And I'm not showing you the process at the squeeze chute because I need to stay here and be vigilant because these there, they are always looking at the fence and they would like to leave and they will, but um, yeah, you will have seen what happens. So that fence is not very stable. It will be improved over the next few days. So that when the vet comes and the official process happens, we don't have to worry about this fence. The thing is, in summer you can't get these posts in and then it rains and after a while the soil is so wet and so blend that these uh, metal posts that go only in maybe some 30 centimeters are really not enough. So this will be replaced by some wooden ones that are very thick and go in at least half a meter or more and there will be concrete also. So maybe later today they can do a first pass on this and at the very least tomorrow because we decided that this is now urgent. As you can see, paperwork. Allow me to introduce you to our shop. It is located at our website kaimito.eu. One of the products is the world famous Iberian ham. After preparation in the butcher shop, it is kept in a huge amount of salt for a while and then hung from the ceiling in climate controlled ripening chambers for three to five years, depending on the size of the ham. People either buy a whole leg, which is between 6 and 10 kilos, or hand-cut slices that are vacuum sealed in 100 gram pouches. As you can see in many of our videos, our pigs fatten themselves on acorns running around the land. The acorns give the ham a very nutty flavor, and after you took a bite, that flavor stays in the mouth for a while, just like with a good wine. While the Palovnia trees in the compound and in B1 have lost their leaves due to the frost, these ones there in CT2, they are still intact. They still have their leaves. This whole area here is less cold because it is more protected than the other parts. So that's pretty interesting. Um, I would love to have some thermometers in all these places to have a better idea about the temperatures and how they change something for the future. The guys have put the bovine family in here into this temporary paddock CT7. Um, the gate is closed so that for the moment um, they don't venture out and disturb the ongoing work. Um, there is plenty of food, but it's old, and we do this in order to let the sun um, get to the plants that will emerge. For next week there is a lot of rain in the forecast, so this is now the perfect opportunity to take advantage and graze off all the areas that have not been touched so far. Up here at the Altiplano there is some forage, but of course it is little and scarce. But we are bringing the bovines here to graze in these areas. The guys are still fixing the fence because all the wildlife 
had not understood that this is a barrier and I have jumped it or destroyed it so it needs fixing and then this area can be used for plant grazing but we will definitely have to uproot everything by means of the picks and then seed and uh, introduce new plants because there's simply too few seeds available and of course the soil is in bad shape so all this is the work for the future in order to improve this land this year has been a bald spot there were only stones now it's looking a little bit better because of the straw that we placed there and here and there one can also see that a few of the seeds that were in the straw have turned into a plant but it's only a few so this is not really making a big difference but at least there's a little bit more biomass now between the stones of course it is far-fetched from being good but at least something is happening the area has a very nice tranquil feeling to it but of course a lot more plants would be nice and you see there some young oak trees we definitely need to protect them somehow but you can't do everything at the same time now the path to down there is truncated they should not venture out to this place just yet so we just cut it here so that we can let them in in the other places there is one issue that came up this morning the guys found the pigs trapped in here so in that temporary paddock and they had to show them the door because they couldn't find it they do respect the string there but it wasn't hot so now it is and the result of that was that they uprooted quite a bit in order to continue munching on acorns and other things so this is good on one hand but on the other hand it's also a problem if it's an area where they should not be doing that but for now up here they can uproot everything as they want that's not a huge issue just the contrary because it helps as long as they don't overdo it and 14 pigs cannot overdo it the area is simply too big so in the future this will not look like it is right now this will be like a7 so it will be a physical fence with some electric elements and then the game is open and close gates and one area will be for a crop for a while and then the crop changes to pasture and then it will be for that for a while and maybe later it becomes a crop area again depending on how many acorns there are and how we want to to use the area because we have to actively manage the whole piece of land in order to yeah, regenerate it and at the same time take nutrients out in the form of a product we can have up to 80 of these areas 80 manageable areas where we can decide what will grow in there and who will feed on what is growing inside in order to become self-sufficient with the feed for the animals it's a cycle as it should be the sky today is looking very nice and it's not that cold also we had some frost this morning it's probably now 14 centigrade in the shade and a lot more in the sun so the grass is growing but then of course not all the whole time because when the sun goes lower the temperatures drop sharply and there is forecast in the rain 
a whole week of rain. That will definitely help. I wish it were warmer, but that's how it is. This is another place where they uprooted right under the tree. And they went as far as the polywire allows them to go. They are smart. They have learned what this wire means. So even if it's not hot, they stop right there. This here is the other sacrifice paddock where we wanted to keep them over summer, but they did not respect the wires around it because they weren't hot anymore. And so we had to stop using it. The green that you see there is from the seed that came with the straw. And because there's a lot of straw, this is growing because the straw retains the moisture and there's nutrients for the very same plants. This is some cereal, but of course this will not grow and set seed because the gate is open, they can come in here anytime and we also want that so that they also feed on the straw that is still sitting there from the last session so that they can make use of it. They also nibble on that spent straw there in the back. They know what to eat and what not, so we let them. It's not a big issue. But in general, of course, this is not feed for them. This is feed for the soil. But as it's accessible, it's not a big problem. They just pre-process it before it feeds the soil. That's a nice thing. You follow a road and you see some pigs. Some of them went in between the cows. Let's have a look. Down there they are. That is a combination that you can see in many places now, here in the Dehesa. The cows also eat the acorns, so it is smart to have them together or let the pigs in first, because the pigs need to fatten themselves on the acorns. The cows don't need the acorns, but they also like them. These are the Palornia trees that we have here in the future dock enclosure. And as you can see, they have lost their leaves. That was due to the frost. And unlike the others that have still the leaves on, they are non dormant. And we will see them back when the temperatures rise. That will probably be around the end of April. That's the experience from last time. The Bermuda grass in there looks like, as you can see, it has grown tall. So if this were a paddock, that would be extremely helpful. But this is freshly seeded and in loose soil because we used the excavator to loosen it up a meter deep, which also helped the trees because you can see how tall they are. And their own leaves are now feeding themselves so this is a successful experiment and we will not do anything here over the winter. This should just be as it is and then we will see what this Bermuda grass will be doing when the temperatures rise again. In here there are a few other things but it doesn't matter. 
So this is looking very good. And right next to it, you can see the grasses that like the cold. So that's the contrast between the Bermuda grass and the winter forage or autumn forage. Because winter it's usually too cold, so even if we have a few warm days, there is not much of a growth with the lower temperatures. Unfortunately, it is now cold and we are still in autumn. So it's a bit weird this year, but I hope that things step by step, thanks to the different management that we do, will improve. And also we do a lot of these interventions now that we, yeah, put something into the soil in order to improve it instead of hoping that rain and animal activity alone will do it. So that lesson we have learned. The corn has now dried out. Um, we are postponing the task to carefully cut it down and apply all that material as mulch in there. Um, we have to do this carefully because we want to see what happened to the trees that were inside. Have they been shaded out and died? Or are they still alive? So therefore we want to be very carefully and basically use a pair of scissors, so to say, to carefully cut each plant and place it carefully on the ground, all the way paying attention to a potential Polovnia tree. And there is a tree and the trunk is green, so this tree is definitely alive, but it also lost its leaf due to the frost. But it's there, so right there you can see it. So we need to go in and carefully cut the other plants, hoping that we can find one or another of the other Palovnia trees. I fear that they are all dead because they have not received any light, but maybe that's not the case. In there is the one and only Tagasaste plant that we have. Let me try to get the camera in there and zoom in on it. So in there it is. It does exist. How well it will grow we will see. It is green so the lower temperatures are not doing it any harm. But I would expect this to start growing when the temperatures rise again. So we have to wait a few months.